Hey, what's up guys? Jay Burton here. In this video, I'm going to go over the most overpowered items to help you level up as quickly as possible in Battle for Azeroth. Let's get into it. Okay, let's go over the most important thing, legendaries. As some of you may not know, legendaries last up to level 116, at least for their special effects. You can wear them all the way up to level 120, but the really cool overpowered effects from them stop right when you hit level 116. So ideally you want to have two equipped, which you can unlock that through your class order hall, but the most overpowered legendary, the most craziest one, is Kill Jaden's Burning Wish. The AoE damage is absolutely nuts. Even if it was nerfed by 50%, this would still be the most amazing item to have while questing. Now of course, this is a neutral legendary, so it's not exactly easy to farm for. So if you don't feel like spending lots of time grinding, or if this is a alt that you level up later on, I wouldn't worry about getting it. And because it's mass AoE damage is nuts with a short cooldown, you can do quests super fast. You just pull all the mobs you need and just AoE them down. Not to mention this is great for war mode PvP, so when I try to come gank you while you're questing, well they're gonna quickly regret it. And then another legendary that's pretty decent is the Magnum Opus. That shield actually hardly ever breaks while you're questing, so if you're pretty undergeared but you happen to have this, or maybe you're just a really squishy class, this is actually pretty decent. Now of course some classes do have really overpowered legendaries that do lots of damage, so for your second legendary you're gonna want to go with one of those. Because if you focus too much on survivability, it takes away from efficiency while you're leveling. You want to do as much damage as possible. <laughs> Alright, next we have buff items. Starting off, Aurelius's Whispering Crystal. After the BFA stat squish, this item is actually usable again. It gives 24 strength, agility, intellect, and stamina. I know that doesn't like a lot of stats, but after the stat squish, this is actually not bad. It's a 1 hour buff with a 15 minute cooldown, so you should have it up at all times. To get this, you go to your garrison, build an inn, and every day, you'll have a different quest giver. Eventually, you'll have Aurelius, and you can get the quest. When you talk to Aurelius, you'll get the quest, go to Blackheart Spire, complete it, but make sure you don't forget to loot the Firefly, and then boom, go turn it in and you have it. There is also the Legion version, called the Repurposed Fell Focuser. It's very similar to the Aurelius Whispering Crystal. It gives a little bit different stats, like it gives more stamina, but less of the agility, strength, and intellect. So it's up to you. These two do not stack together, though. And next, we have the Lightforged Augment Ruin. This gives 15 strength, agility, and intellect, and it lasts for an hour. This does stack with the Aurelius Whispering Crystal or the Repurposed Fell Focus, so I recommend getting both of those. Now, this does require you to be exalted with Army of the Light. If you are not even close to being exalted, I would not worry about it because it's not that big of a deal. However, if you think about it, if you have both of these buffs up from 110 to 120, every single mob, you know, you have a benefit, it adds up. And then we have the Battle Standard of Coordination. This is basically a forgotten item. Nobody remembers this thing. It requires friendly with your guild to buy, and then you just go to your guild vendors and you buy it. It's pretty cheap, it has a 10 minute cooldown, and it lasts for 15 minutes. The reason why this is helpful in Battle for Azeroth is because you'll find in a lot of questing areas, you'll get like 4 quests to go kill a bunch of mobs in this area. You just drop it down every 10 minutes, and you're getting more experience. And once again, if you're using this from level 110 all the way up to 120 for every single mob you kill, this is a significant increase in experience per hour. I recommend you do it. It's just one click and you're, you're boom, you're getting more experience. Next we have food buffs. These should be up the entire time while you're leveling up, just to be as efficient as possible. So first, we have Fighter Chow. This came out Legion, and it would give you 400% increased health and mana regen when you were not in combat. It's pretty insane, however in BFA they did nerf it to where it just heals you for 2500 health per 5 seconds when you're out of combat. Now remember there was a big stat squish, so 2500 health actually isn't that bad. The idea is that when you're running from mob to mob to mob while questing, you have no downtime of stopping to heal yourself. This is especially great for classes like mages, where you have no healing. So this is just increase your efficiency. So I recommend you buy Fighter Chow, especially because it's really cheap on the auction house, and it's actually easy to make. Next we have Bear Tartar. This item in Legion would give you a big speed boost whenever you killed a mob. However, they did nerf it in BFA, where it gives you roughly a 15% speed boost at 110, because you get 250 speed stat when you kill a mob. That's what they made it now, a flat 250 stat. So 15% when you kill mobs still isn't that bad. The idea behind this one is that the quicker you get to mobs, the quicker you kill them and you move on to the next mob. You get the quest done that much quicker, so you're still leveling up faster. When you think about going from 110 to 120, you're going to be killing a lot of mobs. Hundreds of mobs, so just getting to every mob a couple seconds quicker really adds up. It's all about efficiency. Alright, next, let's move on to the profession items. Starting off with jewel crafting, they have this insightful rubelized gem that they can make in BFA. It's a unique equipped gem, so you can only have one. It increases all the experience you gain by 5%. This means experience from mobs, bonus objectives, 
quests, BGs, dungeons, everything. But it does require you to have an item with an item level 200. So it works best for legendaries, if you have like a legendary ring or neck, slap that on, put the gem in there. Otherwise you have to do a little bit of questing, it won't take too long to get an item that's over 200 item level. And the mats are super cheap, so you should expect to see these on the auction house on launch day, but it might be a few hours. But by day two, that should be flooded with them, so definitely pick one up. Remember, this is going to be the only item that gives you increased experience gain for a while in BFA. Next for blacksmithing, they have the mono hardened stirrups, you can interact with items without being dismounted in BFA zones. And leatherworking, they have stone hide leather barding, which means you can't get dazed while mounted in BFA zones. You know, all the normal stuff that they keep doing every expansion. And then, of course, we have the goblin gliders. Everybody knows about goblin gliders, but it's worth mentioning because it's so helpful. Especially because there are some mountainous zones, like Drusvar. I can show you the world. Where a goblin glider is very helpful. And if you're Horde, I really recommend you have a bag full of these because they got kind of screwed over in their main quest hub area. The giant temple, it looks beautiful, it's gorgeous, but everything's so spread out, like even to get to your, your PvP area for your, your table, you have to take a flight path there. It's ridiculous, so a goblin glider is very helpful for Horde. Next we have the looter ring. The looter ring is not important, you don't need it, but it can be helpful if you are an engineer. It requires level 125 engineering to use, and you can buy it off the auction house fairly cheap. You can just loot mobs at a distance, if you're melee it's not really a big deal. Alright, next, helpful mounts. Mounts that can help you level up quicker, not by giving you more experience, but by eliminating other issues to help you level up faster. So starting off we have the vendor mounts. Mounts that allow you to clear your bags and repair while questing. This is a big help because it reduces downtime because your gear breaks or your bags are full, you're going to have to run all the way back to town. In some cases this can be a big travel time and it you know, decreases your EXP per hour. So being able to do all that while on the go, very helpful. So the first one is the Traveler's Tundra Mammoth, it's 20k gold, it's not too bad. And then there's the Grand Expedition Yak, 120k gold, but you can transmog on the go. And then the new one, the Mighty Caravan Brutusar, 5 million gold, but it's got an auction house slapped onto it. The only thing it's missing is a mailbox. I recommend you at least get the Traveler's Tundra Mammoth, 20k isn't that hard to farm up in Legion, definitely want to save up for that. Now next we have the Water Mount, these are very important because this expansion is about islands, and that involves a lot of water. I mean, Horde and Alliance are both trying to recruit people for their giant navies, so it's a, of course water's a big deal, right? The questing zones are built around that. So the first one I recommend, Dark Water Skate. This allows you to swim faster underwater. You can get it from the Darkmoon Fair, so you gotta wait for the Darkmoon Fair unfortunately, but it's very easy to get. Just go buy 500 Darkmoon Daggerfish off the auction house, very cheap, probably thanks to all the botters out there. And boom, go turn it in, and now you can quest underwater with efficiency. Next, we have the Water Striders. These are kind of annoying to get, but they are very helpful. Arguably the most important mount in the game, you can walk on water. Once again, water expansion, very helpful. So the first one you get from the Anglers in Crassering Wilds from Pandaria. You just gotta keep doing their dailies every day, and once you get exalted, you can buy it. The other one involves a level 3 fishing shack in your Draenor Garrison. And you have to go recruit Nat Paggle, and then you gotta do some of his quests, and then do a lot of fishing after that. It takes a long time. This is the one I have. I'm not sure why I have this one over the Angler one, but yeah. Regardless, it's helpful. I recommend you get one of these, unless you're a Shaman or DK and you don't really care. Because you have water walking anyways. Or if you even have to, just go buy some water walking elixirs, but that can be kind of annoying to deal with. So just go farm your Water Strider. You got time till the expansion comes out, just get that out of the way. And lastly, these aren't really overpowered items, but they're gonna be helpful if you're leveling with War Mode. So remember War Mode, you're gonna be PvP enabled, but you're getting more experience. So it's up to you, even if you don't like PvP, I still recommend War Mode. Regardless, there are some items that can help you while you're doing it. So at any given moment, you should be prepared to be ganked. So you need to make sure your trinket is pulled out and you have it ready, like Keybound. And then of course there are some items that can help you, like Astral Healing Potions. These still heal for quite a bit, even after a stat squish, you know, you're still going to be level 100, or sorry, 110. It's going to be a lot of healing. So having that ready will give you a big advantage. Plus there are, you know, Swiftness Potions, Invisibility Potions, all sorts of things to help give you an advantage. Because ultimately, if you're going to get ganked, if you can actually, you know, live and survive it, and avoid the run back from the graveyard, you're saving a lot of time. Rinse and repeat, you know, you prevent all these deaths, you're doing pretty good. Alright guys, that's all I got. If you want to see more Battle for Azeroth content, check out my channel. I've got quite a bit out already and I'm going to be making more. So if you like the video, hit that like button. If you want to see more content, hit that subscribe button. And if you guys would like to directly support my channel, 
consider becoming a patron at patreon.com slash jburtonsimo. I'll have a link in the description below. But regardless guys, thank you for watching, take care.